Okay, so now we have special topics for tonight. <laughs> tonight, at this moment in time. Okay, so this is really the summary of all the math constants or science constants or engineering constants used in different formulas and equations. Okay, something like this. Okay, see if you are really uh, preparing for examination, I mean. Okay, you get to memorize this. Okay, this is because it will be used every time. Okay, it's gonna be like that. Okay, again, this is Emma Seymour, Jenna Boys. Welcome back on the right channel. Okay, like my life, see Jun Jun. Now, so we are really focusing with uh, pure science and then a mixture of math. A little bit of math, but more on science because a science can function very well without math. Okay? Get a, get a point. So it's gonna be like that. Okay? So constants in science and after this discussion, uh, this these are itemized from one to eighteen. So it's random. <laughs> it depends on the situation what you are trying to solve. Okay? Like that, but I have to erase after so that I can because there's a lot. I, I have only a limited, you know, a space in my magnetic whiteboard. Work. Okay, I'm dreaming that someday I'll be able to have a huge board in order I can discuss the, uh, everything about the topics. I will be able to share it to you guys. Okay, everything. Okay. Like that, oh, the screen is very, you know, small. Okay, it's gonna be like that. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys. I'm calling on the screen. Okay, so number one, acceleration due to gravity. Constant, the value, the values are, I'm gonna have to erase this one, huh? Okay, erase, you know. It's going to be metric and SI system. We have the 9.81 meter per second square. Okay. And then 32.2 feet per second square for English unit. And then this is referring to G, small g. Okay. This type of acceleration, the acceleration due to gravity, it's not applicable in horizontal axis motion. It's always vertical, downward and upward, particularly in the weight force computation, normal force computation, and also tension forces okay, in physics. Okay. Or it could be also applied in a trajectory, uh, linear motion, and then uh, project yield, something like that topic in physics. Okay. Number two, specific heat capacity of water. What is the value? Specific heat capacity, and this is more on terminology-wise discussion. It means we need to examine and scrutinize the term. Okay, specific heat capacity. So just like that. So what's the difference between heat capacity and specific heat capacity? Review high school, right? The difference between specific heat capacity and heat capacity, it looks like the same meaning, but there's a difference for that. Okay? That's why it's just look like the same because you have to do a lot of conversion factors so that you can insert that in the you know in the heat energy equation. Q is cost of MCPDT, the mass, that's a specific capacity, like that, and then times the change in temperature for the temperature changes type of problems for heat energy. <laughs> and then also the change in phase heat energy computation also. It's gonna be only the simpler one. For example, uh, heat energy is equal to the number of moles times the molar heat capacity, okay? Uh, heat energy is equal to the mass times the specific heat capacity. And you will never ramble up. You will never mix that up. Because it will never cancel along the way. Okay? Before you memorize, 
see to it that it's also compatible. Okay, when you do the math. Okay, for example, specific capacity is what do you understand about specific thing? Okay, if you need about specific, bear that in your mind that the, there's an involvement of mass in the denominator. Okay, engineers or engineering students who are taking up, you know, kind of engineering related to science or, you know, or whatever. <laughs> okay, specific means involvement of a mass, okay, in the denominator. Okay, for example, if I say uh, specific enthalpy, okay, specific enthalpy, I will say calorie per gram, joules per gram. For example, if I will say uh, specific uh, volume, okay, this is very, very common, guys, in your thermodynamics, if you deal with steam tables computation, right, and also in physical chemistry. Something like that. You get the point. So you get to think to a point that is gonna be in the denominator, so that we will not be confused by using this adjective. This is adjective, right? Describing the type of the quantity. It's about specific heat, specific density, specific volume, specific entropy, specific internal energy. Specific heat, so there must be the ground unit and the denominator if you encounter the word specific described to something. What I mean for something is a physical property, or could it be a chemical property? Okay, or quantity itself, regardless with the type, right? Get the point. Okay. For example, if I have specific heat capacity, we need to say the heat capacity with gram in the denominator, right? Heat capacity with gram in the denominator. So I will say this is going to be a calorie per gram degree Celsius, okay? This is the unit of specific heat capacity. This is not a heat capacity because the heat capacity is only calorie per degree Celsius without involvement of the gram in the denominator. So that's the clear difference between a heat capacity and a specific heat capacity. Be careful in your calculation in the future. Okay? But if you are really a uh, genius or have a higher IQ in math, Terminology will not matter at all because your brain cells could easily detect during the math, the cancellation, the simplification. But if you are just average like me, <laughs> average thinker, <laughs> or a little bit average, so you should be careful also to you know, the way how it is being phrased in the paragraph and the problem and sentence. Okay? Pamawi na lang siya because you are not very, very smart in math. But to those who are gifted, then they don't really need this uh, kind of explanation, right? With the point, it depends on the students also. Okay? But I'm trying to be, you know, to be, uh, what is this one? Primitive. <laughs> I'm trying to be primitive. Okay? Or authentic. So, you're going to be covering per gram degree solutions. Meaning, I'm not copying the style of others during discussion. I have to, I have to have my own. It's pretty original and authentic. Okay? So I don't want to copy. You get the point? Just like saying I don't want to copy the style of other singers. I have my own. Even though I'm not a singer. Okay? Something like that. Uh, even though I'm not a professional singer. <laughs> because anybody can be a singer as long as you can sing. Because in English, the one who sings is a singer already. Regardless, you are a professional singer or an amateur singer. Okay? The category doesn't matter at all. Generally, you're a singer if you sing a song. Okay? Add ER stands for person. If you dance, you're a dancer. That's English, right? If you uh, sing, you're a singer. <laughs> right? If you write, you're a writer. Regardless if you're a professional or amateur. You get the point? That's it. Okay? My English is good. Okay, this is specific heat capacity, okay? Specific heat capacity, okay? Now, mga palanga, what is the specific heat capacity of water? 
Because we are dealing here constants, meaning value, okay, or magnitude, figure, digit, number, like that. What is the specific capacity of water that is simply one? One calorie gram degree Celsius. In this one value only, you can convert a lot of units if you wish. Something like that. Because you have the conversion of different units in energy. Calorie is a unit of energy, right? In terms more of the metabolism purpose, in food intake, something like that. No. It is not the same with the, the power that is more of the electrical energy, right? But the unit is still the same with power, like that. Okay, because we can convert watts into calorie, into joules, blah, 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 into British thermal unit, if you want also, right? For example, I have here, oh, one watt. <laughs> How many horsepower? <laughs> okay? okay, one horsepower is equals to 746 watts. Get the point. Then how can I convert that calorie? Since you know that one watt is equals to joules per second, right? And you know also that one calorie is equals to 4.184. Then bingo, you can get the value of joules and calories in terms of watts. Because power and heat energy and electrical energy are all energies, okay, regardless to the category, generally. So you know, that's why you can compute one over the other, okay? So, for example, if it is also not practical for the purpose of discussion, we'll say, Sutero, can you calculate how many calories that this motor pump can deliver? It's, it's still okay, but it's not practical because calorie is not applied for electricity. But what I mean, you can compute if you can convert that one or so. If you have the horsepower of your motor pump, okay, to generate the power, okay, you can also solve for the calorie for the joules. It's not applied only really to that, but it's not practical to use that in reality because you know, calorie joules are more on the food, food, drinks, nutrients, and heat energy. But this watts like that is more on electrical energy or more on mechanical energy something like this okay so but my point is you can really convert regardless to what uh reference of your topic being considered okay Ganan. okay that's gonna be one calorie so i have also a 540 calorie per gram but take note there's no celsius in the denominator Okay, if there's no Celsius in the denominator, so this is only the latent heat of vaporization. Okay, latent. Okay, if you see latent term in uh, books or in different examination, then you have to drop the temperature. Drop, eliminate that one. It's only calorie per gram. But still, there's uh, uh, grams in the denominator. Okay. Get the points of 540 calorie grams. In here only, you can do a lot of conversion. You can convert to the joules, you can convert to the watts, you can convert to the... So many things you can convert, okay? For this alone, okay? And we don't go to the details, you know that, right? Okay, now we have the number three. This is... Okay, number three, we have the cryoscopic constant. The galalim, right? Cryoscopic constant, okay? So in high school, we normally deal with this cryoscopic constant because we are already trying to solve the colligative property. Okay, colligative property of non-volatile solute. What are those non-volatile solute? Guys, these non-volatile solute are all uh, types of electrolytes that will try to ionize or dissociate when you add water in aqueous solution. Aqueous, meaning water. Okay, like that. So, if that is the case, if you add the water into your electrolytes, mainly the non-volatile solute, some like the sodium chloride, something like that, potassium chloride, magnesium chloride, like that, but it can never be applicable to the, you know, so cruise, the table sugar, these are not electrolytes, be careful, okay? 
get the point? Sugars are not electrolytes because they are not salts. Okay? They will not ionize and dissociate completely. That's why you need to steer too much when you make your juice. The sugar will not dissolve easily as the salt. Try to compare that in your experiment. Actual, for example, I will go to the kitchen now and I have the salt with water and I have also the sugar with water. Try to, to steer the two mixture separately at a constant motion, meaning the same velocity of your hand. So, okay, in a centrifugal motion. Centrifugal? <laughs> like around, like you know, steer, steer, steer. Take note, the salt will dissolve easily because salt is electrolyte. It will produce ions, but sugar never. Okay? Something like that. That's why sugar, okay, will never be in the dissociation topic. Okay? In chemistry. Okay? Get the point. Okay? And then the issue of the Van Hoff factor. And the value of the Van Hoff factor is always one. There's no changes, right? But we ask the Electrolytes can be necessary to one, blah, 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 can be more than one. Okay? So be careful also. It's very important in colligative properties calculations. Okay? Get the point, mga palanga It's gonna be like that. Okay. So, atom sa human, what is the definition of colligative property? Okay? It is dependent to the concentration of your solute ions. Okay? Dependent siya, but never dependent to the nature of your solvent or your solute, okay? Or the identity. It's always the concentration of your solute and solvent. Meaning, when you dissociate to water, okay? It, it doesn't mean it depends on the density, like that, viscosity, like that, uh, temperature, pressure. Those are identity or nature. We remain of nature and identity with respect to the operating condition, like pressure, temperature, uh, let's say uh, uh, density or you know flow rate or let's say surface tension, specific gravity, viscosity, something like that. Those are uh, we will refer to nature or identity. Okay, so it doesn't depend on that when we start collective properties, but we are only focusing to dependent to the concentration of your solutes and ions. Okay? Kato mga number of moles, number of moles. Okay, di ba? So number three, mano na siya ang atong cryoscopic constant will be negative 1.86 degrees Celsius over molal. Kaloka? So superior this cryoscopic constant, just think of a freezing point of water. If you can still remember the freezing point of water is 0 degrees to right and also 32.2 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. That's the freezing point of water. That's the time when the water will become ice if you put that in the refrigerator in the fridge. So this is going to be the temperature. It's the freezing point or the freezing temperature. But this is the freezing point constant. Freezing point depression constant. So should there be using depression? Meaning depression meaning lowering. Okay, lowering, reducing, uh, minimizing, dwindling. Oh, sa pa, lahat na lang sa inyo names po, apply siya. When you are depressed, you are sad. <laughs> Meaning you are not happy. Something like that. It's just like that. Okay? So he is not happy for being water because he's already an ice. You got the point? He was depressed because he's already an ice, not a liquid anymore. That's why depression. Okay? You got the many Depression siya. Many lowering siya. Guys are, shall we say, descending. If you try to put that in a math, sequential orders or pattern, patterning, wrong well, patterning, patterning or sequencing of numbers, so it's gonna be descending from higher value to lower value. Because ascending from lower value to higher value, something like that. Okay? It's gonna be like, you get the point mga panakakunta. So ascending will be increasing, okay? Intensifying. Augmenting, upgrading, raising, 
okay? Lot, a lot of terms for that, okay? Would mean the same thing when you analyze the problem, okay? Get the point? I have the term augmenting. <laughs> diba? Augmenting and intensifying, wow. Or boosting, B-O-O-S-T-I, you mean boosting your self-confidence. Meaning you have to increase your self-confidence in order you'll be successful in the future, right? It's going to be like that. Oh, it's telescopic constant. Okay? So, cryo means cold. Because when you freeze the ad, the water, it will become an ice, but that's very cold already. So, cryo means cold. Okay? Ganon. And our constant for cryoscopic constant is negative 0.186 Celsius per molar. Okay, then molar is in the molality. This is the unit of molality. Moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. In your expression of concentration, formulas and equations. Something like that. Okay? Now, number four, arrays. Okay, because I have limited space in my discussion. So I have ebullioscopic constant. Wow. But you know what you guys, when I was in high school, in college, a lot of memorization. Okay? I'm just keeping by myself. I don't talk to my friends. Like, of course, you will be ashamed that you are trying to study that. And then they will say, ah, you are a fool. Why are you studying that? That is not part of our subject, right? Normally, it's going to be like that. If you are studying out from the coverage, they will see uh, useless. It's a waste of time. Like, they will laugh at you. You know, you can study it. You can study it. Okay? So, for me, they don't know the purpose why I do that. But of course, I don't share to them also by myself only. Just now, I'll tell you, we already have my licensed chemical engineer in front of you. Okay, I don't ever tell this to my classmates before, in my uh, high school, grade school, elementary level, in college. I don't say, oh, I'm, I'm studying this, I memorized this, I studied this. Of course, you will never see that. You will never speak that to them, right? It's, it's uh, you know, awkward to say that. Okay. okay, number four is ebullioscopic constant. It's the opposite of cryoscopic constant, meaning to say these are uh, elevated, increased, and on. Anything this is boiling point elevation constant. Uh, so, ebullioscopic constant is a boiling point elevation constant. Whereas your cryoscopic constant is your freezing point depression constant. Okay. Now, what is your value for your ebullioscopic constant? Is 0.52. Okay. Celsius over molar. But some books based on the memorization, okay, some will write 0.511 something. But I would rather choose this 52. I love it. So that you can stop the rounded off the decimal point up to two digit on digits on me, right? Because 0.511 choo choo like that. It's just the same as 0.52. Okay? Other books also use directly 52. It doesn't matter because it's only point something choo choo choo. Okay? You got the point. The copy constant is uh, the opposite. This is hot. Very hot, okay. Because when the water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, it's it's hot already. You can not even touch directly the surface due to the uh, higher kinetic energy. If higher kinetic energy, the molecules are very wild. They will be bombarded with each other, and it can cause your skin to burn. You are in, okay. Something like as the heat energy is very strong. And the kinetic energy is very, very strong also during the time of the boiling point. Okay? Boiling point, it is a process or a point in which the vapor pressure, okay, the vapor pressure of the liquid will be equal to the liquid surrounding vessel. Okay? If this is your glass, okay, and this uh, liquid, okay, the vapor pressure of the liquid will be equal to the pressure of the surrounding liquid here in the glass, okay, or in the metal, something like that, okay, you get the point, or you can say the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the, the pressure of the liquid surrounding, it's just the same, because the liquid pressure will be in equilibrium also to the pressure of the container, 
get the point because they are all inside there. So it would establish an equilibrium, which is the principle of, you know, I think that is a zero, zero flow of thermodynamics. You get the point? Something like it. So if you really want to, to, to study harder, you need to go back with the principles and theories, especially if topics have laws, L-A-W-S, just like studying a, a law, L-A-W, or political science, you need to go with the law, blah, 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 so and so, like the article, blah, 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 so and so. It's just like also the a science also is having like that. Okay, so that you can really understand where it falls. Para ito mong pataka o pasok sa banga, in which it is not appropriate there. For example, the problem is first law of thermodynamics and you apply the second law of thermodynamics. So it's not applicable, right? Or you will use the third law of thermodynamics in a, and the problem is just only first law. So you are making yourself uh, complicated. <laughs> there is more simpler. Right? Something like that. You get the point? Mm. If you can still remember, right? The third law, or not, third law of thermodynamics states that at absolute zero, the entropy of a perfectly crystalline solid is equal to zero. Okay, that's the third law of thermodynamics. Okay? And discovered by Nern Simon. Okay? So, like that also. When I was in high school and, you know, college, I have to memorize the, the scientists, the contribution, the theory, the equations, the formulas, the processes, the enumeration, and the definition. Okay? So in that way, you can have a very high, high score of theories in the examination. <laughs> because I'm not good in math, as I told you. So you have to make it more in the theories. Something like that. Okay? It's gonna be like that. So I'm not going right? But you can go back. I'm not going to that. Okay? Like that. So number four, egoscopic constant. I'm going guys no. Okay. Let's look at spelling. No, it will use copy. E B U L L I O S. Very difficult, right? This spelling is the is the contest in English that I never joined so far. Okay. My sister is joining that because it's also she's a. Uh, a coach in the spelling contest because she is a tablet teacher. My <laughs> my oldest sister, he, he, she is also a uh, consistent uh, student, valedictorian, something like that. And then, in fact, she almost landed uh, to the tenth place of the board examination in you know education. Uh, Eighty-four percent her score in the last board examination. Okay. And she never, she did not study, okay? When the examination in the next morning, we are still watching singing contest at the time to another barangay. And I told him, Uy, nabalagi ka nagtuon na. Ano mo ka nagtuon na? Bulag sa manyo ba? Ay? Ano na siya? Napareore na. Ay, sus! Pag examination, ako kasi school, guys, 84% point something, then ang top 10 is 86. Hapit na siya dito umpasok, di ba? Nakakano pa. 84%, 84 percent, 84 point six, 84 point something like that. Okay, okay. But in chemical engineering, it's, it's very, very difficult to get that score that much. Because if you get that score, you will become already top notchers in our course. Because normally, we don't hit very high, the top one, because our coverage is very difficult. And that, <laughs> I not, cannot explain that very well. Uh, the standards of, you know, problem solving is very high, you know, because it's very difficult. We study things that we did not see, okay, that's the only difference, the only difference in engineering of all the engineering disciplines because we are just imagining always atoms, molecules, ions, nuclear reactions, visions, in which we are acting just like a scientists. Okay, compared to other engineer, engineering disciplines. That's why uh, our standards is very high during the score. As you can see that also during, if you see newspapers or online uh, top 10 in every discipline, take note that chemical engineering top one is only 85, 86. Okay, that's really uh, different compared to others. I, I don't know because they said Chemical engineering is one of the difficult engineering disciplines. That's why before 
we uh, take took up the chemical engineering. We are uh, 50, 60 in the first year, and then when we graduate, we are only 20 like that because others are shifting to another engineering discipline, going to industrial engineering, going to something that is shift to another courses. Okay, I think because of too much <laughs> like this <laughs> concepts, principles, and a mixture also of math. Though they're also good in math, but you know, kaya nang siya may puti kaya siya guys ba? Ganun siya mga pagdo chuchu chuchu, yung mudyo toki on. Okay? So, if you really want to dig this, and then mabuang chuchu ka guys, really. Okay? You got a point. So, nakalo ka pala. Okay, number five. We have the Avogadro's constant. Oh, my favorite. Okay, Avogadro's constant. This is gonna be 6.023 times 10 to the 23. Okay, it's gonna be, uh, shall we say, a molecule. Okay, it's gonna be uh, an atom. It's gonna be uh, a particle. It's gonna be an ion. It's gonna be a formula units. But they are only equated to one mole. So we say, one mole is equal to 6.023 times 10 to the 3, 23 molecule. One mole is equal to 6.023 times 10 to the 23 atom. One mole is equal to 6.023 times 10 to the 3 particle. One mole is equal to 6.023 times 10 to the 23 formula unit. One mole is equal to 6.023 times 10 to the 23 ions. Like that, guys. And then it will be <laughs> it will be declared in the problem solving. Calculate the ions produced in a magnesium coin. Di ba makalok talo mga problems sa chemistry sa koan? Maybe kaya engineering, hello ka. Okay? Usain na dito tayo, murat magkailak ko. Chok! Nakakalo ka itong saka, ano? Naturally, ano lang siya talaga ba? Complex na medyo, it needs critical thinking to solve. Okay? Like this. And then number six, we have the universal gas constant. Wow, universal! Just like English, the universal language in the whole world. Okay? Universal gas constant. But actually, universal gas constant is also called an ideal gas constant. Okay? Ideal gas constant. Now, which was on guys, when I was in a, uh, uh, high school, uh, college, I'm fan of doing the terminologies, and these uh, three terminologies, but the same meaning, like that. Okay, like this, eh? universal gas constant is also called an ideal gas constant. It's also called a general gas constant. It's also called gas constant alone is just the same. Ganon! So, maximization, right? So it helps also to understand where the problem. Okay, so our gas constant, actually guys, there, there are a lot. Okay, so it depends on you if you know how to derive the capital R in your equation uh, work is equals to NRT. I will teach you something, okay? Work is equals to NRT, okay? Now, so this is the formula we use, and I think in the physical chemistry, right? Taking one and two. This also discussed a little bit in chemistry, but not that very deep, not profound, okay? Meaning not in depth. Okay, so something like that's only shallow, shallow like that, and very basic, substitution only. But in the physical chemistry, you have to do a lot of graph, like that simulation or you know, whatever. <laughs> okay, so W is equal to NRT. Actually, guys, the PV NRT is coming from this equation. Why it will become PV and RT? Because work is equal to the pressure and the change in volume, which is in the First law of thermodynamics, okay, in the uh, related to the Sally Carnot and Clausius Kepler equations. The same thing with you know the heat engine uh, combustion process, something like that, as far as I can remember, uh, and the calorimeter, calorimet calorimetric problems. Okay, more than two before the second the first law of thermodynamics. What is that? If we review that one, that is a uh, Ah, energy can never be created nor can be destroyed, but it can only be transformed to various forms of energies. So that is the first law of thermodynamics. 
Okay, so that's work is equal to the pressure and with the change in uh, in volume. But if we do the integral calculus here, integral integral dice or differential calculus, wait. No, it's no. differential. So if you take the limits, if you have changes in your volume, then you have the limits of initial volume zero to VF here, something like that. And then it will become something pressure is equal to the ln of uh, v2 minus ln v1. This is the rule of differential calculus, like that. And you'll be able to say that one p because this is subtraction and you will uh, the same as the <laughs> division. You'll say ln v2 over v1. The same as also in multiplication. You want to know how many braces are And uh, times times shall you know ln a times ln b may mo sa nasa kuan guys uh, plus okay paris pair ang plus o ang multiplication and division and minus pair siya sa differential calculus rules sa math higher math okay so it's gonna be like this uh, work is equals to chara, pressure and uh, work is also pressure a natural logarithm ln of v2 and v1. Ganon. Diba? So, at a constant temperature. Meaning, constant temperature meaning isothermal. Okay? Isothermal. Okay? And then, there's no heat also here. Q is being erased because it's first dynamic. So, this is acting in an adiabatic process. Where there's no heat exchange in your process. Okay? Something like that. Okay. Now, we want to measure PV and RT. Okay. So, pressure times the volume is equal to the number of moles times the uh, universal gas constant R times the capital P. Capital P, guys, is expressed in Kelvin. Normally. Kelvin did shot. But then, if you try to convert it to Celsius, it depends on the problem. If it will be cancelled along the way, then it doesn't matter at all. But normally and naturally, it will be expressed in Kelvin. Okay, so Kelvin. Kelvin has no degrees, ah. Okay, only the Celsius. Degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, and degrees Rankin. Okay, but for this Kelvin, no degrees when you say that. Okay, only Kelvin. Then on. It's not degree Kelvin. Only Kelvin. Because there's no small circle at the top of the capital K. Then on. So Kelvin is equal to degree Celsius plus 273. Oh, this is your Kelvin. And then if you such as Kelvin, you convert that to Kelvin also. And then you you match the universal gas constant. So universal gas constant based on memorize, you have to memorize and you guys say the number of guys. Okay, as long as I as long as I know how to derive, then bingo. Okay? Two lang sha. Anyway, I can convert. Okay, so something like that. The 8.3145 joules mole Kelvin. The Kelvin here will be cancelled because we have also T temperature here. That's the purpose, okay? Like that. And I have also 0 0.08205 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin. So which is which use this one? Okay, if it's expressed in atmosphere, then use this one and later it use this one. Then if there's no pressure in the numerator, only only heat energy, then use the other one. So it's up to you to you know, analyze the compatibility issues of your units when you solve the problem directly. Anyway, you can convert, but we need to save time, right? You get the point. Okay, this is universal gas constant. Okay. By the way, the ideal gas equation is the PV is equal to NRE, and this is also the general gas equation was discovered by Mr. Benoit Emil Paul Clapeyron. Okay. And he received the Nobel Prize for this, of the ideality of a gas. Okay, Binoy, <laughs> Binoy, Emil, Paul, Clapeyron. And then when this Clapeyron have uh, what we call this one uh, collaboration with Mr. Clausius, this is Clausius Clapeyron equation on the uh, first law of thermodynamics there. Okay, but you know. 
this general resolution is his contribution alone. But apart from that, he has a collaboration study with Mr. Clausius. That's why we have Clausius collaborative equation, like that in thermodynamics, right? But this is not thermodynamics, right? Okay, you get the point. Mutas kung historia if you try to discuss the Clausius collaborative equation. Okay, now we have the density of water. It's very easy. Okay, what is the density of water? Okay, density of water is just one gram per ml. And with this unit, you can play around the conversion to kilogram per chuchu, kilogram per liter, blah 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 so and so. Okay, but in my high school, I also memorized others. Though I can convert that, I still memorize also one thousand kilogram, okay, per cubic meter. It's also the density of water. Okay, one gram per ml is equal to one thousand kilogram per cubic meter. Is equal to gram per cubic centimeter okay because okay because one cc or one cubic centimeter is just equal to one milliliter okay that's why one thousand milliliter is also equal to one thousand cubic centimeter okay like that so put that there and you can solve anything there okay you can also express this in terms of grams per liter kilograms per liter if you want okay this is metric and si unit and now we go to the english unit for the density of water we have okay 62.43 pounds per cubic feet okay so only this and then the rest follows Moba. <laughs> Moba siya, guys. i think so <laughs> right i'm gonna shout Okay, English. English, okay, kasi gara lang dito, guys. Pero na lang yapon siya. Okay, it depends on the problem. Okay, this is the density of water. Then, guys, if we speak about density, guys, mga talanda umitad, this is dependent also to the temperature, ha, and pressure, operating conditions normally. They get that value based on temperature and pressure also. In that case, based on my memory, that is basing on uh, at 4 degrees Celsius and at 1 atmosphere, you can get the density of water of 1 gram per ml. This is also tricky part because most of the standard conditions is not at 4 degrees Celsius. It's always 25 degrees Celsius at room temperature and ambient temperature. Okay. The range of an ambient temperature is 20 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. This is the common range of temperature in our room. This is the, the standard. That's why it's called room temperature because it is standard somewhere along the way here, 31, 32, 34. That's why this kind of temperature is the normal basis of all standards values in, uh, in organic chemistry, organic chemistry, whatever, like that, okay? So, I'm going to show you guys now. At 25 degrees Celsius, we show our enthalpy. Enthalpy change of formation. Okay, ito mga standard, uh, standard reduction potential of the uh, voltage of different chemicals. How the chemicals can create electricity when you mix them over the other, like that. Because chemicals also can create electricity. That's why we study electrochemistry. Okay, you get the point. And then, it's going to be like that. Okay. Ito tapo yung mga palangga. Ang dami na sa brain cells ko, ito ang pili labas. Laha. Charot! Okay, now, we have the molecular weight of air. Okay. I think I discovered this. I'm already college, I discovered this. This one. Okay? Like that. Okay? So, molecular weight of air. Actually, you'll be confused because air is general. Okay, so you should tell what is the composition of an air? Oh, that's your first question. Actually, there's a lot of composition of air at present situation because we have contaminants gases in our atmosphere. Contaminants, the hazardous gaseous pollutants, okay, or hazardous air contaminants in our uh, atmosphere or in our planet Earth, something like that, or in our environment, right? So, Actually, guys, 
uh, Almighty God, okay, give us only the percentage by volume of nitrogen, which is 79%, okay, and 21% by volume of, of uh, no, yes, oxygen. This is ideal. When you go to the Webster Dictionary, the definition of ideal is perfect. Okay? No errors. For example, I will have to find my ideal woman. So as much as possible, 99.9% .9 is perfect for you or suitable for you. That's the term ideal. Okay? Meaning, it's very impossible to, to make an ideality, especially in classes. So this is an ideal air. When you made of air, ideal air. Okay? Meaning, there's no contaminant gases in it. Or, or else, we need to do experimental analysis in the laboratory just to get the contaminant gases in the atmosphere. And I'll be using the uh, environmental uh, no, gas monitor. But that is not also practical to do that every time. That's why we need to have the ideality of our gas always discussed in the theories in our educational system. Could it be in uh, high school chemistry and college chemistry, something like that, okay? Like that. So, what is your guys? 79% of nitrogen gas, actually, may not be So, zero percentage by volume? Yes. Okay, so we have also percentage by mass and percentage by volume. So, meaning to say, this is mass of solute over mass of solution times only percentage by mass. Okay. Percentage by volume. Volume of solute over volume of solution times only. But in case of an air, you will go to the elemental constituents. You get the point. Like what you are trying to refer to. For example, if you try to determine the percentage by, by volume of oxygen, you will say volume of oxygen over the volume of nitrogen plus volume of oxygen or the total volume of your ideal air. So, then if you talk also with the mass, you will say mass of oxygen over the mass of oxygen with the mass of nitrogen or your total mass of your ideal air which is composed of nitrogen gas and oxygen. So like that. So this is per such I can look so that you can compute the molecular weight of air. Assuming you don't know, okay? Me, I know because I memorized that already, okay? High school. Oh no, fresh college. Okay, something like that. So, molecular weight of air, a higher of you. Okay, so, nitrogen, the atomic mass of nitrogen is 14 gram atom. This, guys, you need to memorize atomic mass also. If you, lo if you love to become a chemical engineer or a chemist, or related to forensic science, nuclear chemist, nuclear engineer, or petroleum engineer, or you know, like this, attached with your sciences. Okay, your course is attached with your sciences. Uh, sciences, or you want to become a scientist. Okay, memorize the atomic masses. Okay, so nitrogen is 14 gram per atom, and then oxygen is 16. Okay, gram per atom. So this is your molecule, the atomic mass of each elemental constituent. Okay, so molecular weight of air, how can you do that? So you can say, okay, the mass, atomic mass of nitrogen plus the atomic mass of oxygen. But that is not true because we still have to carry the percentage. 79% of nitrogen and 21% of oxygen, ganon. So, so, so how can I do that? In this situation, mga palaga, you need to do the basis of calculation for this. Okay? Since you have the atomic masses, chuba chuba Okay. Ngayon ka, percentage by mass. Ganon. So, computer niyo ang mga mass. Ganon, di ba? So, ano ka? Mass of nitrogen. Ganon. How can you do the mass of nitrogen? Since you have the molar mass, then you can compute. Okay? So, mass of nitrogen, okay, and mass of oxygen, okay, like that. mag ka 100 grams, right? The same as also assuming 100 uh, liter if you assume volume, okay, but let's try, let's try mass, okay. I have 100 grams of my air, ganon, okay, like that. Now, 
So I have 79% of nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen. Okay. Guys, in this case, guys, help me to solve because the student will not understand. You will, will you multiply the relative 79% to 100? Magic? No, you should follow that formula. You can. Percentage of nitrogen, ganyan di ba? Is equals to the mass of nitrogen, ganyan di ba? Over the mass of air, okay, times 100. Since you are given the 79, put here, 79 percent, ganon, di ba? Then, mass of nitrogen, okay, in which you don't know, then mass of the air, in which the basis of your calculation 100, times 100, so, so, mass of nitrogen is equals to, 79 percent convert that to a point something. To make it a figure. So, 79 times 100. Right? Ganon. So, it will become 79 grams. Ayaw, ito ito yung times, 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 it's coming from this equation, percentage by mass. Okay? Like that. So, we have 79 grams of your uh, nitrogen. Mass of nitrogen is 79 grams. Okay, how about the mass of your oxygen? This is not aluminum direct, so it's going to be also 21 grams, right? 21 grams of this oxygen. Ganon. Okay, now, how can you do that in computing for the molecular weight since you have 14 here? And now let me guys, okay, individual. Okay, ganon. So, ano ang nilagay mo siya? So, molecular weight of air is equals to the oxygen, di ba naman kay oxygen, na 16, o 16 grams per mole. Because it's already combined the two. Okay, dahil ganun siya, chuchu. Dahil, ano ang nilagay mo siya na 79 grams of it. Okay? Di ba nakakalo ka? Okay. So, ano ang nilagay mo? 79 grams Okay, 79 grams and then gram per mole. So, no matter grams per mole. So, you have how many mole of your nitrogen? Ganda na, di ba? Ganda mo atomic mass. Di ba? Nakaluka. Oh, pila. So, sa ibong, ang ibong nitrogen. So, 14 man siya, no? So, 79. Okay, divided by 14. 14 man ang nitrogen, guys. Nitrogen pata ha? Ganon! Okay, so 79 divided by 14 is equals to 5, 6, 4 moles. Okay? 5, 6, 4 moles. And then the oxygen code, okay, we have 21 grams times the molecular weight of oxygen is 16. 16 grams per mole. So, we have 21 divided by 16. We have 1.3125 moles. Ganon. Okay. Ganon na siya. Nanakay mole, nanakay 1.325. Nanakay percent. Okay. So, you should multiply this by the percent. Okay. So, 5.64 times 0.79 is equals to 4.3. 479 and the other one also 1.325 times 0.21 is equals to 0.22785 ganon so you add it mo siya maon yung imong mole total moles the mole of one component of total moles of component is a percentage mole percent of oxygen and mole percent of nitrogen you can also compute for the volume percent of oxygen Volume percent of nitrogen, mass percent of nitrogen, mass percent of oxygen, and you can also compute the mole fraction. Okay, mole fraction of the two because it's small, right? Two moles over total moles. Now, what are the share times? The fraction of the shot. Okay, like that. Fraction is not a percentage. You should not multiply by a percent. Okay, something like that. So, anong yung mo siya, guys? Okay. The molecular weight na to be after. So, ganon. So, I have uh, 
Balik kita ulit total, right? We have 14. Ganon, di ba? 14. So, 14 times 0.79. Okay, plus uh, 16 times 0.21. Right? Anak siya. Okay? So, pila man siya, guys. So, 0.79 times 14. We base in the so we base in the monoatomic monoatomic ah, 11.6 okay and then 16 16 times 0.21 is equals to okay 16 times 0.21 is equals to 3.36 okay I show you how guys the options because you know we need to understand that we, we go by with the process, not direct, direct. Okay? Gawas pa sa kalit-kalit ang akong vlog. Okay? So, we have 11.06 plus 3.36 is equals to 14.42. Okay? Our molecular in terms of monoatomic. Monoatomic. Gas, because I consider only nitrogen, I consider only oxygen. If I consider the diatomic N2 and O2, let's see. It's totally different, right? If you do that. Diatomic and monoatomic is just not the same. Okay? So, I will let, let's try nitrogen gas N2 and oxygen, oxygen gas O2. So here, the first calculation of mine is monoatomic. There's no subscript. Mono. Okay? But now, di. Diatomic nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. So let's check and compare the result. The bag and one. Okay, the bag. So 14 times 2, 28. So 28 times 179 is equals to 22. 22.12. Okay. And the other one also, 16 times 2, the bag. So 32 times 0.21 is equals to. Plus 22.12 is equals to 28.84. Now, I will I will let you think which is the correct answer. The 28.84 grams per mol or the 14.42 grams per mol. So this is the way how to solve. Because if you go to the direct, there's no challenge as if you are memorizing only, right? Okay, so it's gonna be biglaan. Para makitang taan. Magkaalaman. Charot! Magkaalaman. Okay. So, which is correct? The 28.84 or 29 or the 14.42? Guys, the molecular weight of air is 29 grams per gram mole. The second option is correct. Though I already memorized that in my brain cells, I'll just complete it back. Okay? And this one. The atomic. I have options because I'm not really that sure also because that's 20 years ago in my chemical engineering and in my study. So how can I, you know, I remember everything. That's why I have option where to choose. And the, the one I memorized in my brain cells coming out here, this, this is correct, right? You get the point? Things like that. If you know how to derive, you can say, I prove and emo memory is still working. Okay. Now, we have... Ideal gas volume at SPP. Oh my gosh, this is Avogadro Law. Mr. Amadio Avogadro Law uh, postulated, oh, well, postulated, that the number of moles of a gas is directly proportional to the volume it occupies. Something like that. So, this uh, volume at SPP, he said that in every one mole of an ideal gas, Okay, at standard temperature and pressure, STP, meaning temperature is uh, zero degrees Celsius, right? And then pressure is one atmosphere. Zero degrees Celsius meaning up to 98 Kelvin, right? Get the point. And one atmosphere. Then your ideal gas volume is occupying a gas of 22.414 liters. So this is standard. Okay. This is memorization. But 
if you want to derive that also, you can also derive that why it come, came out to be like that. Okay, so there's a difference between memorizing, memorizing purely and memorizing with proving why it happens to be like that. Okay, get the point? Or memorizing with understanding is better than memorizing is just plainly referring to the books. Bookish, something like that. So it's going to be like this. 22.414 liters. Okay. So we can prove that by using PV and RT again and substitute all the standard conditions there. What do you mean by that? So the wrong. For example, pressure and standard number. Atmosphere, volume and standard here is going to be uh, this one. Oh, you have to compute this one. Sorry. Uh, number of moles is one. Because one mole ideal like that. Universal gas constant. Katong mga ounces ang giing ninyo. Katong 8.31 for baron. Or katong 0.0.025. And yung temperature ka yung Kelvin na 298. Because that's standard, then bingo, you can solve this one. And since this is liter, so you will use the 0 0.08205 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin. So that mulugwa ang liter. Okay, so that we can achieve this concept. This is discovered by Mr. Amadio Avogadro. That's why we have Avogadro law. Okay, of the ideal, ideality of a gas or ideal gas. Okay. In this theory only, in the volume, but the general gas equation is discovered by okay, Benoit, Emil, Paul, Clapeyron. Oh. Benoit. Now we go to the Faraday constant. Okay, Faraday constant. So, should I say Faraday constant? Uy, <laughs> oh, diba? Ang dami. So, Faraday constant, of course, it is Farad. The unit is Farad. Mr. Faraday, Michael Faraday, actually, okay, he discovered the electric charges of the certain electrons in electromagnetism, something like that. Electric charges, right? Okay, wait, I will try to remember. Okay, the, for example, if I have a one electric charge, okay, one electric charge, how many columns? So, 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 column. So, column is a unit of a charge or is a unit of electric charge. Okay. And we have also another version which relates to this. Based on the numerization again, we have one electron volt. Okay. Since you are referring now to the voltage or the volt, there's a uh, very huge movement of your molecules already. Voltage. So you, it's also equal to 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19, but here joules. Okay, meaning to say this electron volt refers to the energy taking place in a wire or in a path or in a coil or in a metallic conductor to create electricity. But whereas your electric charge is basing only to the to the charge passing in every minute, something like that, so that we can have an electric charge or the current. Remember, current I is equal to the charge over seconds, right? So we have a column per second is just equal to one ampere, okay? You get the point? Because of this equation, okay? Current or electricity or ampere is equal to the charge over the time. Since the charge is equal to 1 plus 6 all the times to the negative 19. Then on. So you can compute also in terms of energy by using this one. An electric volt, something like a chuba chu chu. Okay? You get the point? Oh, then on. Now, farad, 1 farad, more than a 1 farad day. So more than a shakatong farad day constant. Okay, Faraday calls it atong ana. 96,500 colon, okay, mol Kelvin. Okay, like that. Mol electron, sorry, because this is charge. Okay, like that. So electrons are responsible for this. Sorry, nakita ko kanita ng electrons, so it's the most responsible particle to flow to create an electricity. Okay, sorry, it's not the temperature by the way. Okay, so Faraday constant, mali siya, 6,000 per column, mol, electron. Ganon. 
Then, how can we arrive this? This one. Try to think. How? Where the settler came from? Came from? Diba? Ngano may tabo mo siya ni Nani? Okay. Ngano? So, tiig ko nung ko. Charot! So, tiig ko nung ko nung 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 So, kwao ni Nimo siya dito sa electric charge. Okay nga. One electric charge is equal to 1.60 times 602 times 10 to the negative 19 column. Gano, diba? Column din. Ano din ka? Ngano naman siya yung mall? Okay. Ang kanin mo, dito na siya sa katong abugad row. Okay? You get the point. Let's try only, guys, because this is on the spot, really. I know this to solve 20 years ago, but this is on the spot. Let's try to prove it, okay? So, 1 plus 6, 0, 2 times 10 to the negative column, right? And then, if you try to connect this to the abugad row, let's check lang, ha? Okay. So, now the abugad row na. Now the one column, then we'll be back. Okay, so muna siya, 6.02323. Okay, muna siya, isaka na mo siya dito. Okay, muna na muna siya ikasaka. Okay, 23 minus 19. O na kay 4 ka 0. Right? So, multiply by Abunga Bruce number, 6.023 times 10 to the 23. Okay, ganon. Okay, and then you need to produce a mole here because this is small, this molecule, right? Mole. Okay. Get the point. So this is 6.023 times 73 of particle per mole. Okay. So that's why you get this column per mole, and this electron is a particle. That's why you put electron here because electron is responsible in the electron's flow. It's not the proton, it's not the neutron. It's the electron. So if you multiply this one, ako lang i-check the check guy, ha? Basta lang ito kung memorization mo eh. Nakaloka. Okay, so 6.023 exponent to the 23 times 1.602 exponent to the negative 19 is equals to bingo! I could still remember. 96,000 talaga siya guys. 500 columns more electron. See? Things like this, you should know how to derive, ha? Huh? Even though, how many years passed by, like that. Okay? Because you understand, really. Okay? So, that's the Faraday constant. Okay? Then the unit is column, mole, okay, electron. Ganon. So, so, tinong ano naman siya, one farad? Okay? Ang tanang one farad, guys, dili na siya equivalent sa... Uh, unit sa Faraday constant, ha? Faraday constant, wala yung Farad na unit, ano niya? There's no Farad unit in the Faraday constant. Ang kanyang one Farad, guys, is a unit of magnetic flux. Okay? Really ba? Ah, no, sorry, it's not. Because, you know, magnetic flux is the Weber. Sorry. Sorry, I forgot. Okay, this is, uh, the one Farad is the unit of an electrical capacitance. Okay? So, electricity. So, mga electrical engineering, something like that. Electrical capacitance. Right? Capacitance. What is a capacitance? What is an inductance? What is a impedance? What is a resistance? You should know also to, to differentiate the four. Okay. Again, impedance. Okay? Inductance. Capacitance. Resistance. Resistance is very sure. Because that's very basic in uh, the Ohm's law. Okay? Resistance. Okay? And then, the capacitance is quite okay also a little bit. But how about the inductance and impedance? Actually, guys, this impedance come, came out in our board examination. Okay? Before. So, that's why I could not... I, sh I should remember these terms. Okay? So, one farad is supposed to... Uh, the unit of electrical capacitance. Okay? Now, so, so, tiyan sa mga value ng farad. Guys, kanin farad gubot? Kanin siya, guys. Gubot. Because there are four units involved for this farad. So, we have uh, second squared, gano'n, gano'n. The second squared, o, oh, diba? Then, na siya, kilogram, meter squared, o, oh, ampere, squared, gano'n, gano'n. Okay? 
Dapat ka siya tinit, guys. Okay? So, it's gonna be like that. But I think this is S4 because, you know, if you convert this one, there will still be remaining S here. Okay? To the point. Ganun siya. S4, ampere squared, and M squared. Ako ni correct the UK. If we try to convert this more, ang S mahulot na yung siya. That's why we need to raise the S for maximum of 4 in my memorization. Okay, this is the unit. Or correct me if I'm wrong guys, I'm going to do it. It's not this also. Okay? Yes, I think so. Sentence raised to the power 4, di ba? And then times ampere raised to the power 2 over kilogram times the surface area. Okay, of your wire or your path met square meter. This is what farad, the unit of electrical capacitance. Okay, ganon. So, S, Coulomb's constant. Nakakaloka. So, so, pero what is Coulomb's constant? Of course, it's covered by Mr. Coulomb. So, we have the Coulomb's law, right? So, how we can remember the Coulomb's law related also to Michael Faraday? Uh, John Maxwell, like that, they're a contributor for the, you know, electrochemistry thing, okay? And Mr. Ohms, like that, they're all related to electricity, right? Okay, okay. Columns low. Columns constant, right? Ay, nakakaloka. Kasa ko niya, guys, ang remote ko. Okay. Okay. Memory recall. Okay. Columns low constant. Oh, the rat. What is the sa Colomb? Uh, L O U no. C O L U M B, right? Colomb. What is siya? Okay? Colomb. Constant. Ah, ano pala siya? Colomb. Constant. <laughs> basta Colomb siya. Spelling with that pattern. Basta muna siya ipagpasabot. Capital C. Yes, I like good in spelling also. Okay? C. Okay? Colomb's law states that ganun siya. Electrostatic force or electric force is equal to the Coulomb's low constant K times the individual charges of your two particles Q1, Q2 over the radius raised to the power 2 something like that so this relates to your uh, electrically charged particles that will move in your on the path being considered could it be a battery, a wire, a galvanic shell? It depends on the material you are cho choosing, right? As long as these uh, charged particles, electrically charged particles, are moving and going in a circular path, just like a magnetic field. Okay, it goes like this in a circular path, then it creates a centripetal force, which is Fc is equals to the mass. That's velocity squared over R. This is the centripetal force, right? Related to the ani. Okay? Why they introduce this? Because maro kayo ang examination in the future. Mo isuti sa kote siya mga electrons. Dito, dito niya. Wala niya pang hatag ng masyadang hindi mo ano dreari. And then yung mga dami ng gamit na yung viscous kinis. Butan niya ang velocity sa particle, di ba? So why they niya? N squared over R is equal to k q one q two. What I mean, 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 what uh, what is the velocity of an electron travels at the radius of 0.2 meter that is static force of 10 newtons? Ganon! So what is the velocity? Oh, it, that's why you need to consider that equation to substitute that here in electrostatic force or electric force so that we can compute for the velocity. Because the centripetal force has the velocity there. Okay, you get the point? Mm, ganon siya. And then our column constant ko makalagang is a.99 times 10 to the 9 uh, newton meter square over the column square. This is the unit. Then if you forgot also, then 
do the formulas so that we can determine the units exactly. Because sometimes also you will be missed by the units, it will be reverse during memorization. But take note the charges are inside the constant. But of course, by common sense, your columns score will be in the denominator. Because things like this, okay? That is the Coulomb's constant. Now, guys, if you forgot also the Coulomb constant, and you can remember also the uh, permittivity constant in the free space. Grabe kayo, okay? Nakakalok. Okay. Ano na sa ibang formula mga palang kapitan? Before you substitute to that Coulomb's law constant, mo na ka? K is equal to 1 over 4 pi Okay, times the permittivity constant in the free space. Ganun. Okay, ana, ana ara siya eh. So na kay pi 3.4 to 16, ang equal na kundi mo, lahat na pala siya value, which is equal to, ano na kundi siya mga palang kapagitan. Okay, 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. Ganun tayo yun. Imulit na siya kay pasok nito sa banga, ang farad over letter. Okay? Yeah, ang farad, yung nasa tulis ng kang. Pero ganun ito, kung yun yun, S to the 4, kung yun yun, meter squared, ganun, kilogram, meter squared, then, isab siya pa, di ba? Ito, baka anin na lang siya. Okay? Magkasintan sila ito, guys. Okay? And, because there's also too much units there, and you can, and then if this simplified, then what is your answer? Ganun. I don't have to show, you know what I mean. Okay? This one, ito ba tayo siya, kanil siya ng formula, ha? Ang kanil ko, guys, epsilon O is a Greek term, epsilon O, meaning to say this is the permittivity constant in free space in your electrically charged particles, okay, with a certain velocity, okay, because all electrons cover a certain velocity, if not, they will not move, okay, always force a velocity, remember, for example, uh, particle A, um, like that. Particle A, Jun Jun. Particle B, Michael. Particle C, Lito. So particle Jun Jun have the velocity and at the same time have a force. Without without the force, it will not travel. Always have the force. Force is the requirement to move. Okay? Not necessarily the mass because the bukat bukat lang siya. You can tap it. It's always the force and the velocity. So it's assumed to be you are, you are having a constant mass. Okay, something like that. And then that is accelerating. Okay, because both of the arrows are going to the right. So what if if your velocity will be go to the left? Okay. Oh no, your force is going to the left. Okay. Of course, you will be decelerating. Your velocity will be negative. Okay, your speed will be negative, your acceleration also will be negative, going to the left. So it's always the force and the velocity will play around when you have a motion. Not necessarily the mass, because the mass, if you are light, if you are heavy, it will still move. As long as you have that weight force, you have that strong weight, you get the point. Okay, that's why only force and velocity with each other, the man, complementary with each other. Okay? Or dependent with each other, either directly proportional or indirectly proportional or inversely proportional with each other. Okay? Because if we mean dependent, it doesn't mean it has to be directly proportional only. The word dependent meaning you it could be either be inversely proportional or directly proportional. Or else if it is independent, it doesn't have that theory at all. Meaning it's constant. Okay? For example, I say, uh, mass is independent to this. Even you accelerate, it is true because it doesn't matter how thin you are, how light you are, how heavy you are, how fat you are, something like that. You will still move. Right? If you have a force, something like that. That's why mass is independent to your force and velocity. You get the point? Then on. Something like that. So, hold na siya sa columns daw. Unan ko siya, no? Okay. So, we should also remember ha, na ito, nasa tayo, ang uh, magnetic permeability. Pero, di sa lang kayo sultan, kayo, wala tayo, wala tayo, wala tayo, wala tayo. Okay. So, plan constant. I love this. Plan constant. Okay. Nakakalo kasi Mr. Plan. Without Mr. Plan, there will be no light. 
the scientific approach. Of course, God gave us the light because God said, let there be light. And there's sunlight. There's the moon. Like that. But apart from that, biblically, scientifically, we have also Max Planck for the theory of light energy in which the particle photon is being released. Something like that. Okay. So Max Planck constant is going to be 6.626. It's going to be applied in physical chemistry or thermodynamics. Be careful of this. Or physics, particle physics. Okay? So 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules second. Wow, nakakaloka. Joules second. That's the unit of Planck was memorized this from now on. Okay? But before memorizing, understand also that's coming from the formula also of energy is equal to the frequency times the Planck constant h, the energy of choo choo. And frequency is equal to the velocity or the speed of light in a vacuum. Okay, maybe there's no medium, the time and space on the empty space, just like a solar system or a, uh, you know, an environment, open space. That's what we mean of a vacuum, something like that. Okay, it's not enclosed, it's not, uh, there's, no, there's no opening, uh, it's open, sorry, it's open wide like that, so like that. So this is velocity over the lambda, the lambda is your wave like that. Okay, then for example, I will say, so uh, Sotero, can you calculate the, can you calculate the, the speed of a color orange? Because all colors have speed before we can see that in our eyes. For example, there's a yellow color. Before developing it into a yellow color, okay, because normally it starts as colorless, something like that all. All will start as colorless or black. There are two. That's so why we have the black body principle by, you know, black body radiation by Stephen Boltzmann constant. Uh, Stephen Boltzmann law. Okay, let's forget that for a while. Hold muna. Okay, so if everything, calculate, calculate the speed of a pink color. Okay, I can calculate every color I want because I have the formula. Because it will never be a color pink if it will not establish the correct and the appropriate wavelength, frequency, and amplitude. Okay. Or else it will not fall to the electromagnetic spectrum category because there's a category a red, orange, blue, yellow, blue, indigo, violet, and then the black, the white, the infrared colors, the ultraviolet colors, something like that. So, infrared is a mixture that you cannot explain. Ganon. And then, for example, for example, in your electric heater, in a fiber optics, in remote control, there's a colors there generating that you cannot tell whether it is an orange, yellow, blue, because it's invisible to your naked eye. So that, that's what we mean by infrared colors. Okay. And then the ultraviolet colors also, the UV colors is coming from the sun. Normally you will say it's a white, it's, a, it's also no color, no specific color. You get the point? The specific color will only be just in the visible range. Okay, the visible radiation in the electromagnetic spectrum, starting from the red, the orange, the yellow, the green, the blue, the indigo, the violet, and the black and white. Okay, but the other colors, tertiary colors, secondary colors are only purely mixing, mixing like that. That's only uh, imagination by the people, but the reality, there's no such mixing, mixing, chuba, chuba, chuba. Okay, you get the point? So, artificial na na siya na crayola, water color, but the original colors have no mixing, mixing. There's a specific frequency, wavelength, amplitude, like that. Okay? You get the point? Mm. Oh, so, you can. So, so, tell me, what is the color of the sun? This attempting question, for example, if you face the uh, examination of the future, uh, the sun, uh, the biggest star is the sun. Okay, that's the biggest star in the, in the solar system. Because sun is also the star, but a biggest star. Okay, the, this is the Proxima Centauri, the scientific name of the sun, S-U-N. Okay, now, this biggest star, what is the color? 
Okay. A, orange. B, green. B, blue. D, violet. Nga nga. Eh, huwag kayo kalibutan sa kausa of electromagnetic waves in the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay? You should know that the color of the sun is not white. It's yellow. Okay? It's just becoming white to look visually because it's very far. Okay? The, disperse, the dispersion of the color tries to, to fake us in our eyes because our eyes normally can see more on the white and black rather than the colors that are not really that familiar that requires the, you know, the frequency, the amplitude of the to, to appear. Normally, black and white sa garan. Okay? Mabito to sa una, guys, and there's no color TV because it's not easy to arrive those colors. Starting talaga sa, sa black and white. Okay? Ito na po, this, uh, through space and time in the solar system. In the Big Bang Theory, 18.3 years, billion years ago, that's the time we uh, we have imagined that there's a lot of colors coming from the black and white originally only. Okay, you get the point. Mm -hmm. through, time, through time and space. And darkness contributes the largest color. Darkness. That is the outer space. Or the solar system. It's not the white. Okay, you get the point. That's why we have the black body radiation. Is our basis to produce colors also. You get the point? So, why this a black body? Because that is the, the function of that is to re radiate the ray so that the colors will appear. You get the point? If there's no reference, then the ray will not, uh, will not bounce. You get the point? Will not bounce if there's no black body color at first. You get the point? <laughs> You get to kumala siya na, watch it on colors. Ganon! Nasamahan nyo, ang ink may color no, hindi pa, nakakalapang ink, hindi siya gray, visible gray. Charot! Okay. So, ang atong po, ang 6 for 6 to 6, and then you get to for Joseph's second. Kataasad ako explanation, guys. Okay? Nakaloka. Okay. Grays. Okay. Muna siya no. Ano yung matas na Ludwig Boltzmann constant? Nakaloka. Ludwig Boltzmann constant is applicable in the entropy of the microstates. Okay? Entropy, the randomness and the disorderness of the system, okay, and the process, something like that. So, the entropy of the universe, the total entropy of the universe is just the sum of the entropy of the system and the surrounding, something like that. That's gonna be a... Uh, Ano lo yan guys? Uy, nakalimot ko. Nam si lo ang entropy. <laughs> Charot. Nang kaloka. Okay, Ludwig Boltzmann constant. It's gonna be uh, KB is equal to 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 joules per Kelvin. Paano kayo entropy na yun? Because entropy formula is heat energy Q over time. That's why we have joules, the unit of heat energy, time, uh, temperature, sorry, is unit of Kelvin. Okay? Capital T. I put small t, that's why what comes first in my brain cells are the time. I change in capital T, so that the time, ah, this is Kelvin. Very fast correcting the mistake. <laughs> okay, so nakasabu. Okay? Like that, so Boltzmann constant. Okay? This can be used also in the entropy is equal to the NR, LN, W. Ano gusto ba? Mag-integral calculus, deficient calculus, mag-limit-limit sa kanil. Uh, uh, diba? Pressure times volume. Volume, volume 1, volume 2, limits-limit. LN, LN, juma, 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 logarithm, gano'n, gano'n. Natural logarithm, LN. Okay? So, we don't go to that because it's highly mathematical. As long as you know that, that will be applicable here. Okay? Things like that. Okay? Your NR thing is your KV, NR. Okay? Is your KV. Nakakaloka, di ba? Okay? Ganon! Okay. That is for Ludwig Boltzmann constant. Ganon. So, he discovered also the entropy in 1877. Okay? Like that. So, we say Newton's constant. Wow! Number 14. Newton's constant. Isaac Newton's constant. Okay, guys. This Isaac Newton constant is not applicable in the three laws of motion of Isaac Newton. In the three laws of motion. 
Okay? This Isaac Newton constant or the Newton's constant or the gravitational force constant, okay, or the gravitational force constant, the same, is applicable in the universe. In the universe, in the outer space, in the solar system, in the Milky Way, in the galaxy, something like that. If you travel on a spaceship, for example, if you're an astronaut, how can you compute the distance of the moon to the sun? Basically, studying astronomy. Okay? Astronomy is a, 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 a branch of pure science that deals with the study of heavenly bodies and celestial bodies in the outer space. Something like that. Okay? So, this more of like that. But, the concept is analogy to the centripetal force that I told you a while ago and also to the electric charge, electric charge forces. Okay? Or electrostatic forces. Ana -ana siya. Ana siya ng formula ni Juan, guys, na Newton, okay, Newton's law. Newton's law, or gravitational force con law, is equal to the G. Our G is our Isaac Newton constant, or gravitational force constant. Yaman. Times mass 1. Hindi na siya charge. Okay, charge mo itong mga electrostatic force, right? Dili, mass na siya. So, mass 1, mass 2 over d squared. And if it is a char, d na po siya. But the same, it goes to the power 2. Now, okay? Ang iyo niyo, yung paro ka ayaw malukubos ang kilogram. Okay, naman sa kilig. Okay, mga ito ka. Uh, kilogram squared. Diba? Kilogram squared. Ganon. Laro tayo siya, diba? So, sa ito pa, Newton meter squared ang numerator. Pwede ka makalimot. Okay, kaya na. Newton ba yun? Newton mo. Kumanin si Newton. Okay, ganon. Okay, this is gonna be a 6.67. Diba mo na siya, guys? Okay, 6.67 times... Excuse me, no. 5.67 lang siya, sorry. 5.67 times 10 to the negative 11. This is our gravitational force constant, universal gravitational force constant, or the Isaac Newton constant. Okay, 5.67. This is check the guess. 5 ba? 5.67. I think 5. Ha? Okay, but, um, because this is, will take a long derivation just to get the G for this. Really, because it, it, you will reach to the Albert Einstein theory, you will go also to the theory of, uh, uh, this one? Uh, Aris, ano, Galileo Galilei, and then you will go also to the theory of Johannes Kepler in the three laws of uh, three laws of motion in the universe. You will go there, and then you will also uh, derive. You will connect also the Einstein, the theory of relativity. You will connect also the Newton. This one until such time that you can get the G. Very lengthy. Okay, so I cannot, you know, I cannot do that. Okay, get the point. Okay, so 5.7 times 10 to the 11 Newton meters per kilogram. So, what is the gravitational force constant? Now we go to the permeability constant. Wow, wow. Okay, permeability constant. Okay. Kung saan na siya sa Sotero, tas yung kung ano vlog, no? Ako yung hihurot kay para wala yung problema ani. Okay, so permeability constant. Actually, this is also known as magnetic permeability constant because this deals with magnetic forces. Okay, ganon. Mag permeability constant. Okay. Permeability constant is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. Ganon siya matutu ka. Okay. And the Newton meter square. Newton, the meter square is a boss. Okay, or this is equal to Tesla ampere meter, something like that. Tesla is the unit of magnetic field, or magnetic field, or magnetic flux density. Ganon. Okay? So, ito na po na siya. Mabali, agad na sa Newton, kaya sa'yo naman siya, kaya nga, ay ganit yung Tesla. Ngayon yung Tesla, mag-lupog yung kaya siya, ganit siya makotikotik. Okay? For example, one Tesla is equal to kilogram per square ampere. Nadiyan kayo current. Okay? Like that. Dito na po yung mga palangga. So, ba na siya ang permeability constant? Asa na siya ang permeability constant? Pero, 
Guys, ato ni siya daw dito sa kuwan. Atong magnetic field strength. O di ba? Magnetic field strength is equals to the okay, permeability constant, magnetic permeability constant ganon. Mu o na siya guys, mu o. Okay, times the current I over the circumference of a universal circular path. 2 pi r. Right? This is the circumference, right? Of a uh, circular. I think so. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. Because as I remember, magnetic field travels in a circular path. That's why we need to consider the circumference. Okay? So, magnetic field strength, our unit is, uh, is going to be ampere over meter. Okay? Okay, and then your mu O is this one, multiple per meter squared. Atong ibutang. Let's derive the unit so that we can really prove that this is going to be the ampere meter later on. So, the term newton meter squared. And we have also here the ampere. Right? Ampere is current. Okay. And then we have the 2 pi radius is in meter. Okay. Now, cancels the, the same units. Cancel ang n. Napakinhabilin nga. Newton. Okay. Newton meter. Ang ampere is going to be on the top. Right? Like this. So we have Newton. Wait. Okay. Ampere meter. Since you know Newton is kilogram meter per second squared, right? And also ampere. Okay. And we have this. What is it? Meter. Not only one, but meter. Now, as you know, meter. So you will say kilogram per square ampere. Okay. This one. But this one, this is the unit of your magnetic field. And the magnetic field will relate also to the magnetic field strength. How can you do that? Okay. So, okay. Now, how many This also equal to Newton meter ampere. Okay. Newton meter ampere. Can you show? Now, ngano mabut ng kaalinga equation? Okay, like that. Okay, ngano mabot makana ng equation? Okay, kani siya, Newton po ni siya. Okay, kilogram meter per second square. Cancel ang kilogram, cancel pa siya guys. Yes, cancel, 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 cancel. So, ampere. Meter is the denominator. Okay, and then yung saka ang ampere, sa taas, isaka yung siya. Okay, so this will become ampere meter. That's why magnetic field strength is ampere meter. Okay, get the point. Most of the shape metal. Pwede sa tamo gali na tong Weber. Napatuti tayong formula na yung guys. The Weber per meter square is the also the form na unit of magnetic field. Okay, guys, magnetic field and magnetic flux density is just equal. Okay, ganon. But never equal to, never the same with magnetic field strength. Okay, you got the point. Anak siya. Okay? Muna siya ang permeability constant. Apply the reality. Okay? And then, apply ko na itong simple rush siya, guys, na wala yung movement sa current. This kind of magnetic field strength formula involvement of the current. But there's also another version that does not involve the current. Nakatong sa'yo nakaayo. Anak na yun. Magnetic field strength is equal to magnetic field over the mu o lang. Ganun. Okay? Ito ito po ang mga palangga kung hitan. Ano na siya na itabu? Di ba masayin lang siya? Isa siya yung permanent concept ka itong 4 pi times 3 to negative 7 na ganyan chuchu-chuchu and then makuha din muna siya. Di ba? Anak siya guys. Charot! So pwede sa din mo yung tesla ang per per meter o pwede sa siya yung yung newton per meter squared ang anak. Okay? This permeability constant. Okay? Kalas. Now, we go to electric charge constant. Very easy, right? Electric charge constant. Okay, katumbal na siya nga na, guys. Ano ka? One electric charge is equal to 1.6 cell times 10 to negative 19 columns. Okay? Like that. Okay? So, kini siyang mga columns-columns. This will be 
substitute it to your Fc is equal to Kq1, Q2 over R squared discharge. If the problem don't specify the charge, it's automatic that you will carry over this charge for the electrons, protons, electrons and protons only because Newton has no charge. That's zero, right? Okay, so it's gonna be like that. If not mentioned, okay. If mentioned, then use that also directly. Or if it is being asked, <laughs> of course you will solve. You will never ask shown, right? Get up to my palang that. Okay, ganon. So I said to calculate one electric volt. This ha. Now you give me a one electric volt is equal to one point sixty times ten to the negative nineteen per joules. Then I know. So I'm going to have the formula with that. Okay, yeah. Power, Power is equal to work over time. Okay? And then they So joules per second. Diba? Kung na kay watts, no? Kuha na yung bingo. Ganun kayo. Joules per second, watts na siya. So that's me. This power is an electrical energy. Okay? Okay, watts man. Okay, electrical energy. And your work is simply joules, calorie, like that. Because work, Okay, energy is the capacity to do work. That's why the energy and work have the same unit. You cannot perform a, a work without energy. You got the point. So, tam to each other. Of course, they have the same unit to equal, or else it will not move. It will not have a motion. Okay, you got the point. So common sense also. So, energy is the capacity to do work. That's why we can substitute work directly to E, because this is also equal to power, or electrical energy is equal to the E over time. E is also an energy in terms of other things, not the electrical, the calorie, the number of and so, okay? It's also equal to P is equal to work over time, because the work and energy is just equal in concept, because, okay, energy is the capacity or the ability to do work. And so you need to equate work and energy as one, technically, okay? So this is fact. You can never, you can never uh, violate that rule. Energy is just equal to work, especially when you do that, okay? Get the point. Requirement man ng energy to do the work, okay? Get the point. So, mara na siya electric charge constant mo na, huh? Okay. Mara na siya, no? And then we have the permittivity constant through space. Something permittivity constant through space, wait. Okay, what is A point eighty five times ten to the negative twelve. Ganganon, okay? Uh, Farad per meter. Okay, what is that? Okay? What is that? You need to know that. So, asa niyo mo siya ma-apply? Kani siya. Ato niyo ako ng tutulong ako niyo sa premiero. Tung ato niyo mo ma-apply sa. K is equal to 1 over 4 pi, like it's very so and so, okay? Only she answer. Okay, it's so a K. Okay. Number 18, last. We have the Stefan Boltzmann Law. Can you see Stefan Boltzmann Law, guys? The, the gun can shake Kaabi. Okay, but you know, we're doing it over and over again. I'm direct. Okay? Like that. <laughs> Nakakaloka. I direct you. Oh, guys, guys. Makonik, no, ha? You will connect the electromagnetic wave. You will use the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. After that, you will connect that to the energy, to the light photon. And after that, you will connect also that to the theory of the heat transfer through the J-shot. The, okay, heat transfer through, aside from the convection and conduction, the special part is through the J-shot. Until it's a anna. So, you will see that the rumble, you will connect it, you will establish it of another formula like that. Mataas ang yung istorya. Okay, that's the point mga palang ako yung tag. Okay, so mukhang up the tag luminosity. Luminous. Luminous is the adjective we will refer that it will it can create a light. Meaning to say, luminous meaning it will radiate light. Okay. Oh, this is more luminous over than the other. Meaning, this is more bright than the other. Or it will more shine than the other. You can easily by our eyes that it is more brighter than the other color. So that's luminous. Okay? You get the point? Because the meaning of luminosity is the energy that will be released from a surface. Okay? Through the area per time. 
Ganon. So, yun si Ana, siya ang luminous. Meter squared over second. Okay. Muna siya ang requirement sa luminosity. If you try to convert that in a math or formula. Okay? Now, luminosity, this is the term we refer to, right? But this is not yet a unit. This is a, a noun referring to this. Okay, so therefore, your unit is a flux. F-L-U-X. Okay? So, if uh, the question will say in the future, what is the unit of a luminosity? Okay, or what is the what is the basic unit of a light? Maglipong ni ka, electron, photon. Ang answer will be flux. Okay, because this is the definition of the flux. Okay, the energy released through surface area per time. And that is luminosity. Okay? So, the unit of luminosity is flux. Okay? Ganon. And after that, we can convert this also to candela. Candela also is a unit of luminosity. That's why we have candle like that. So, it's, that's why it appears to be like that because it's scientific theory also. The name candle is derived from scientific approach coming from luminosity after the flux. There's also candela. Okay. Candela, I think it's gonna be uh, Spanish. I cannot... <laughs> And then, the English is candle. Okay? Get the point. Mula siya. Mula natin yung candle na mo. Siga siya. Because that is luminosity. Anything that will uh, produce a, a color is luminous. Okay? You get the point. Ano siya. So, the formula of luminosity. So, you know, okay, luminosity is an energy release. Okay? So, it's a form of radiation. But electromagnetic radiation, not the nuclear radiation, which is deadly and risky. So, talaga, luminosity, luminosity is equal to the Stefan Boltzmann constant times the area, okay, times the capital T raised to the power of 4. Wow, bongga. Okay. And then we can relate that also to uh, uh, electricity, chuba chuba chuba. Analogy, you know, the magnetic field, no, magnetic flux, sorry, is equal to the magnetic field times the area times cosine theta. Again, mag magnetic flux, because I said the flux is the unit here, right? So here also is the magnetic flux. So you can also connect that because there's a common area. Then you can create another formula also through that. Things like this, yes, it's not being taught in the school, okay? Because ang kanyang pong magnetic force, kung kanyang siyang luminous intensity, is very far from the context. But you can still do that because there's a commonality between the two. There's an area in the luminosity, and there's also an area in the magnetic field. If you try to solve for area, you can equate that in a kilogram, then you could compute also what is being asked if there's getting like this, especially the angle of inclination. See, this may not hold siya on that. Now, 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 now. Uh, the light will pass through the glass at 20 degrees with a magnetic field of blah 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 so and so. What is the temperature? Then, ganon. Diba? With a Stephen Boltzmann like this. Makuha ni mo siya, guys. Kaya naman tayo in relation sa magnetic field to luminosity. You get the point? Kaya naman kung ano ang area. Okay, ganon. Diba? Any question so far? Ganon. Hawaan sa ang magnetic field ng ilabo. Okay, ganon. So, ang Stephen Boltzmann constant mo, hindi siya, guys, taas niya siya exponent. Okay, ang constant niya. Okay? Mo niya siya ang 5.67, okay, times 10 to the negative 11. Mo niya siya, no? Mo ba niya siya? Yes. Mo niya siya yung constant na ganito. Okay? And then, ang anak niya siya ni flat. Watts, okay, meter squared, Temperature is to the power of 4. Okay? Anak siya, guys. That's the mga Stephen Boltzmann constant. Okay? You get the point? Okay? Mula siya. Stephen Boltzmann constant. But just like you also, ha, maybe I am, I am wrong. Because there's a lot of constant. <laughs> Moro ako na hindi man. Okay? Ganun. And then your area, guys, is not the area of a rectangle, rhombus, pyramid, rectangle, like the square, the circle, cylinder. It is always an area of a sphere. Okay? Sphere. Why? Because by theory, 
our scientists normally observe that there's no perfect square when we, we do the analysis and the study before. It will sound up like a, a sphere talaga siya, not very perfect. Okay, so they will use the 4 pi r square area for this. Substitute that in the area here, and you have the Stefan Boltzmann constant, and you have the temperature, you can solve for the luminosity or the luminous radiation of different lights. Okay, ganon. Okay, you get the point. Now, if we try to uh, equate this to the heat transfer through radiation, or something could be shot. Mwala ni siya. Q, Q, T. Delta Q, delta T. Ano na yun? Okay, si point to emissivity, Stephen Boltzmann constant, area T4. Okay, now. So, yung sotero mo naman emissivity. Because, guys, this one will try to reach it to a certain medium. For example, it will pass through the glass, it will pass through the concrete, it will pass through the wood, the light. But here, we are assuming as a black body particle. There's no obstruction of open space such as in the universe, solar system, in the atmosphere, outside the black body. Okay? The black body is de dependent by himself only. He doesn't absorb the surrounding lights around him. By himself only, he has his own light, okay? To generate it to the planet Earth, blah, blah, blah. That is black body. Okay, that's the universe, something like that. And then it will be rejected to the planet Earth, and the moon, and then the sun also has a black body, okay? Meaning his own light only. He doesn't borrow from the stars, from the moon. That is his original light coming from him. So, yung ana kami na radiation, black body radiation na siya. That's why, guys, ang emissivity na ito, hindi ka compute na ito, mo refer you ka sa atong reference na black body. Okay, mo alam na. Emissivity, okay, or else, itang-tang na itong emissivity sa in-transfer to radiation. Okay, yung hindi mo na ito itang-tang din. Okay? So, that means, na siya purpose, ana rin na siya. Okay. Emissivity E or shall we say effective emissivity is just the same. Emissivity what the effective could stand only for the natural process. That's why he put effective, but actually it's just the same. Without putting effective or not, it's just the same meaning. So emissivity is equal to the total actual okay, radiation emitted by material. Like that. <clears throat> For example, there's a light and it will uh, reflect to the the glass or the door in the mall, something like that. So apply ani siya ni Mrs. P. Okay, get the point. Now. Over the total radiation emitted by the black body. Okay, mo na siya ni mo denominator because have black body masya sa environment. Okay, you get the point. Mo na siya. Okay, especially if it's an enclosed system, there's a black body. No, no, if computing is emissivity, guys, it's always less than one. Okay, less than one. Okay, I know. If it is one, then it is already a black body entirely. Okay, no total actual emitted rejected by the material. Okay, so sa tupa, Katong luminosity, di ba, nakuha ko yung inyong emissivity. That is purely black body radiation through time and space sa solar system and the, and the universe. Something like that. Or in the outer spaces in our planet Earth. Right? Because there's no obstruction of you know? The air, like this, blah, 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 so on. So, so pwede sa kasi siya ng black body, like yun siya. Okay? But in here, nakakit yung mga obstruction. So, the wall, the things like that, the laptop, the TV, and then the fluorescent is inside in here. So, you can expect the black body radiation in the future. So, you consider the total actual radiation emitted or released by the material. Okay? You get the point. Some money of fluorescent. So, there's a covering. So, there's a... It will pass to the covering before coming to my eyes. Ganon. Or before radiated to the room. Okay, ganun di ba? Okay. Now, kanisya ko yung ganito na. Napakanita. Q, 
delta key, delta T is not necessarily for delta T understood in my heat, nasa kayo yung temperature is equals to the emissivity, emissivity, kanil siya na E okay, then Stefan Boltzmann constant times area times capital T of the form this will be used all the time in the problem solving because this is a practical approach if you are inside of the earth not the other one and so it's not common in examination kapag kung sa kong itulong nyo na luminosity okay, but we don't know also because examination is expected unexpected magdod siya Okay, so you need also to teach you about that. Okay, but the common is this. Okay, Stefan Boltzmann rotation. Okay, which is the third type of heat transfer. We have the heat transfer through convection, heat transfer through conduction, and heat transfer through radiation. And there's a sa transport phenomena. Okay, in unit population, it's a chemical engineering subject. Okay, something like that. Okay, you do pop it mga palangga kung hitad ano nasa. Okay? Kakalapa. Diba? Okay, ako yung sip-sip ko yung heat transfer. Good. Okay, muna siya ng tabi. Basta na ganito ng heat transfer, mga, mga evaporation, kumulit ang pinanak ko ng mga heat exchangers, i-compute mo pila ka ako on stage, gano'n ang ganito. Yung gano'n itong mga, I don't like itong mga distillation, itong mga liquid-liquid extraction, ternary extraction. Ang ako kasabot itong mga absorption. Nakasabot ko po yung jig as immediate as the heat transfer. Kanyang mga momentum transfer, di ba? Heat transfer. Di ko gano'n mass transfer. Okay, na tayo. Okay, you got the point? Mass transfer is more on the concentration gradient at the heat. Inong duman. Matag mabuang. Okay, thank you so much. Mga palangga kong hita. Thank you so much for watching this video. This vlog of mine, I hope you like it. It's very lengthy, right? Sorry for that. Bye-bye. God bless everybody. If you are not subscribing to my YT channel, then you can subscribe. And then you can click the bell notification for some of your stuff. Bye-bye. God bless everybody. See you later. Dagan ko giyaw-yaw, bro. Fairness.